welcome to Denver Parks and Recreation at Home. My name is Doug and this is Outdoor Knots. So today we're going to do three things. We're going to learn about knots, how to tie them, and then what these specific knots are useful for. Uh, there's all kinds of knots out there in the outdoor world, but we're going to focus on the uh, most useful ones uh, that are applicable to all different kinds of activities. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first family that we're going to learn about are called knots. And knots are uh, uh, ties of the rope that can leave something on your gun. We've probably all done the old pretzel knot before. Yummy! But did you know that this is a, this is a very useful outdoor knot? The, it's called the overhand knot. So this leaves something to uh, put a little stopper in your rope if you need it to keep it from sliding through something. It's also really useful if we tie it on a bite. So a bite is a kind of fun, fancy word for using uh, the middle of the rope instead of the end. And we'll tie it overhand on a bite first. The same way we tie it overhand, except we're going to flip it around and then push it through. Now, so this is a great knot to use if you want to create a closed loop for attaching something. And there you go. You're ready to attach your rope and start tying more knots at the other end of the rope. So that's our overhand on a bite. Let's do that one more time. We'll make a bite in the rope. We'll flip it around once. Think about with the overhand knot is that if you've ever tied a really tight uh, knot in your shoelaces, this is the same kind of knot. It can get really tight. So anytime we pull one end of the knot, it makes the whole thing tighter. How hard it'll untie. So this leads us to our second knot, which is the figure eight family. Okay, well, we'll start out on one single strand. And this one's like the overhand, we'll come behind once. We're going to go all the way around 360 and back through. And that makes a figure eight. And another way to tie this one, if you like stories, would be you make an alien. <laughs> we're going to pinch, pinch them because we're scared. We're going to choke them with the rope and then we're going to poke them in the eye. And now our alien has turned into a figure eight. Uh, this is one that works really good with kids. This is a happy story. So we're going to make a baby. We're going to give it a hug. And a kiss. Now we have a big break. So in and of itself, the figure eight isn't the most useful knot. It's definitely easier to untie than our overhand. It's really useful if we tie it on a bike. So if you remember before, our bite is taking our end of the rope and folding it in half. We'll do the same motion that we did uh, on the single strand. So we'll go around once, twice, and back. Awesome. So now we have a figure eight on a bite or a fish. Sometimes people call it a figure eight loop. It's got a loop. This one is really useful again for attaching to things. It's a really common one for things where you're going to put a lot of weight or tension on your rope because it's easier to untie. Because we have all these extra bulk in the knot, it just makes it easier to untie. So this is a great one to use if you're going to put a lot of load on it. Okay. And the third way we can use figure eight is called the figure eight retrace. And this one is really useful for uh, creating an attachment around a large object that we can just clip through. So first, I'll bring out a bunch of extra rope, I'll tie my figure eight. So if you remember the story, it's another baby, a hug, and a kiss. And then now we're going to retrace it around our object. Now, we're going to retrace our knot the way we came in. So I'll start going through. And I'll keep following it around. Keep 
keeps going around. And then our last move is to come back out the way we started. Awesome. So now we have a very secure attachment point around a large fixed object. This could be like a tree, it could be part of your car, or anything out there in the woods you'd want to attach something to. So a really useful knot. All right, and our, the last uh, from the knot family that we'll learn today is called the Bolin knot. And this is a great knot that we've inherited from the world of sailing, but it's useful for many, many other outdoor activities as well. It has a similar purpose to the figure eight uh, retrace in that you can tie it around a fixed object. It's a little more adjustable, and it's also way easier to untie when it gets weighted. So imagine a boat going back and forth, tightening a rope over and over and over again. Uh, so this is why the bowling knot is a, a sailor's choice. Okay, so first things first, we'll go around our object. And then with the long end of the rope, we're gonna make a little fold, a little loop. And this is often a story is told with this knot involving a bunny and a rabbit. So this will be our rabbit end of the rope. And then this is the rabbit's hole. And this is the tree. So the rabbit will come out from his hole. He'll run around the tree, so behind it. And then he'll go back down in the hole. He's tightening up. And that's our bowl of nut. Things to take a look for are you're looking for, it looks like most like a mouth with a little tongue coming out. That's an easy way to tell that you've tied it right. And usually you want this, the rabbit or the inside strand to be on the inside of the rope when we're done. So this again, this is really good to use if you need a knot that's easy to untie so you can weight it over and over and over again and it doesn't keep cinching down on itself. So because of that, we want to make sure we have plenty of tail left so the knot doesn't untie itself. This is not a self-tightening knot. So that's the bowl and nut. Awesome. So our next family of uh, knots are actually called bends. And bends are a family of knots that are used for joining ropes together. So they can't exist unless you have another rope to work with. So the first one we'll learn is called the flat overhand. And this is the easiest and quickest way to attach two ropes together. So we'll take both ends and then we'll tie our overhand knot. If you remember that one from before. So we'll go around once and back. So this knot is really good to use, again, to join ropes together. It can hold up a good amount of tension, but it's a nice one to use if you know you want to untie these knots later. And our key point is we want to have lots of tail, just in case a little bit of slippage happens so your knot doesn't fall apart. So that's the flat overhand. Our last hitch we'll learn is called a trucker's hitch. It's a really useful hitch uh, to uh, tie things down with. You can build a lot of tension with it. But the trucker's hitch is pretty tricky though. It completes, uh, consists of two different knots that will uh, tie together. So let's get started. Okay, first things first is we'll bring our rope around and around our object a little bit. Say this is uh, something we want to really ratchet down tight. First, the next thing I'll do is tie a slip knot, which is kind of like our overhand, except we push a bite through. So that leaves us a little bit of an attachment point, but also one that we can untie really easy later. Next, we're going to go through our slip knot, pull as tight as we need to, creating a little bit of a pulley here. And then we're going to finish it off with a, what's called a half hitch, a slippery finish. So take our rope, 
make a little loop underneath, and then we'll take the end of the rope and push that through. And so we need to untie this. We've got it tied down really, really tight, remember. Let's pop that out. 